So Eliza, what are we making today? That's a, well, is that sugar? It's sugar. I <gasps> thought we needed a little gift to ourselves. Of course, if for this cocktail in particular, you could totally substitute any sweetener you want, honey or agave, any of it's perfect. But I'm using a little sugar here today. And I'm gonna make a little simple syrup to begin our cocktail. We're gonna make something special. We thought it'd be fun to have a little celebratory uh, dish of sorts to make this, this celebration month really come together and come to light for everybody. So simple syrup, very simple. <laughs> one bar sugar, one bar water, call it a day. I'm gonna flavor our simple syrup with a little bit of fresh basil. This is one of my favorite mm. herbs on the whole planet. I'm just gonna very quickly chiffonade it, add it to that, and almost like a tea. I'm just gonna let it steep for a little while while we get to chatting. Oh, wait, how do I know, again, basil's good condition or not? Oh, good question. Uh, you know, typically, the smaller leaves are the sweeter ones just because they're younger. So uh -huh. I did have a bunch here that's got quite a few larger leaves. It's still gonna be delicious, okay, but okay. when they're smaller, they're a little younger, a little bit more tender. I, see. I also think you go for the green here. So nothing too brown. I see. I see. That's helpful because I know sometimes I have friends who have fresh basil, but sometimes it gets browns. Is that bad to eat or? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think as long as it is. Because I got scared when good. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this as long bad, as it gonna... smells okay, you're fine. <laughs> mm. Mm. Very cool. And Beautiful. And how much ba basil so do you good. put? Oh, so this one's just going to be a few sprigs. It's not going to be a whole, whole lot. Okay. Um, I'm just using uh, just a very small bunch for this. This will make about two servings. Okay. So I think we're very close here. And I'm going to save a little bit for my little garnish because we got to make it look pretty. I was yes. it up. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, how perfect is that? I think we have some friends here. Welcome to Innovator's Kitchen, where we pair cooking with leadership lessons. Let's take a bite into this wisdom. Today, we are super excited to celebrate Pride Month um, and, you know, all about allyship and, uh, you know, how much of a perfect way to do with a cocktail. That's it. <laughs> what cocktail? Because there are many kinds. Oh, there are. And I'm making one. This is one of my own. This is called the 3B Bevy. We've got a little bit of all of my favorite components here. We've got a blood orange, a little basil, and the secret ingredient. We're going to finish it with just a little bit of balsamic. So you get some of those wildly oh. different flavors. You get some sweet. You get a little bit of the savory from mm -hmm. that basil. You're going to get kind of an acidity, a nice little sour punch from the balsamic. And of course, we're gonna have just a little bit of extra pinch of salt to make this taste absolutely divine. Um, and then this is fun to mix with really anything. You could toss in any clear liquor of choice, choose your own adventure. If you don't wanna use uh, the, uh, the slightly more adult version of this, you could totally go for a mocktail and add just a little bit of extra club soda. And it's a really mm. delicious drink in and of itself. So I'm just juicing all of my blood orange right on in here. It's oh going to be the prettiest God. color as well. <laughs> that looks so good. And, um, you know, there, it reminds me just of the importance of like honoring those diverse flavors and diverse perspectives. So mm. I know as we were thinking about, you know, what's a dish or a drink that we want to highlight to celebrate Pride Month, one of the things that really came to mind as, you know, being both straight and thinking about how we think about allyship, the, the perspective of how we share a table and space really came to mind. And remind us again, like, you know, why, why cocktail in particular was something that resonated with you and what we wanted to do. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we have a lot of friends who are in the community that we get to celebrate this month. And I think for me, just being able to celebrate a little bit, offer up a cheers and get people to come mm -hmm. around a table together, really, you know, honor the friendship, honor that gathering is really important to me. Um, and I noticed you too, Monica. Yeah. So. And I think as we highlight, you know, celebrate LGBTQ month and pride month, one of the things that I thought a lot, um, you know, growing up um, both in a, uh, in Asia culture and Korean culture, and uh, in the States, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, you know, this might be uh, totally embarrassing of me to admit, but like, I didn't know enough LGBTQ communities uh, when I was younger. And so I thought that was only on TV. I thought I was, you know, oh, that's like not mm -hmm. a Korean thing, because like, I haven't seen any Koreans publicly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
um, and uh, how um, naive of me and ignorant of me to not realize it. And I share this with actually a lot of my closer friends and now I guess mm-hmm. publicly to admit yeah. that, to just show that how I think society wise, we don't think enough about the inclusion in the table, in the space that we think. And we talk about celebratory, but um, we don't bring enough of that in every celebration space and every mm-hmm. table that we sit in. Um, and so it humbled me to realize how, um, ignorant I was and how I need to be extra more mindful and learning. And now I'm like, you know, I I completely actually even forget about that lens because I'm focusing first on just getting to know somebody who's amazing, who happens to be from a different age, different background, different sexuality, different socioeconomic. And I think that's so critical in how we think about the space that we Mm -hmm. share, where we live and not feel like we're judging. And I think again, Mm -hmm. um, the identity is so huge and being able to show up fully as who we are is so key. Um, And creating that kind of welcoming environment is I think, especially in a leadership role, a hundred percent essential welcoming every walk into the table Mm. (laughs) as you will. (laughs) And then for you, I'm curious, like why is that important, especially also in cooking and like why the lessons uh, and what we can do differently? Mm. Well, I think everybody shows up with a different story, right? And and being able to honor that is a really important and powerful way to see change in our world. And I think that <laughs> we can start with these small measures of, of celebrating together side by side, hand in hand, it'll grow. So mm. it's a simple domino effect, you know, in, mm. in the culinary world, I've seen it and in, in many walks of life. Um, but allowing space and and being offering up that invitation, I think is, I mean, in my book, essential. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And even in cooking, like I envision, like uh, mixing those different flavors. That's actually where the richness is. It's not when you separate it. Exactly. It's in bringing it all together that the magic really happens. So blood orange, that's fine by itself. Basil, beautiful dandy Mm -hmm. you put them together and you add a little bit of this balsamic you're gonna wow yourself with the rainbow of life here so i'm gonna i'm gonna put this together if you will indulge me here yes please we want (laughs) to be able to celebrate (laughs) yes yes so for this cocktail i'm just gonna use two to three ounces of whatever clear liquor you like again Mm -hmm. you can totally just substitute some club soda here and i'm gonna pour over about half of this you have a choice here. You can strain out yeah. some of those solids if you like and just get that really beautiful fuchsia color that looks so lovely. Or you can oh. add a little bit of that fresh basil right on the end. Whoa. And then if you want to leave a little space on top, I do like to add just a little splash of some pop on the top of this. You could also use champagne if you want, just a little splash. Uh-huh. And now we get oh, to that's have a why beautiful. That was oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The we get basil. to have a little. A little ode to our friends and a little cheers together, Monica. What do you think? We make a toast. Yes, (laughs) to toast, to inclusion, to everyone being to the table as where you are and who you are fully as where you are. And just really welcoming and appreciative. I think um, especially this month, it means a lot for everyone because unfortunately it was not welcoming for many before. And so I hope that uh, this is a reminder for folks who have not thought about it. This is your opportunity to do so. And for folks who have, thank you for doing so. And in the meantime, we toast in celebration that this will be and continue to be the norm as it should have always been in celebrating our diverse voices. So but in the meantime, you can totally try this cocktail at home now, right? And everybody should. I just poured a little balsamic right over the top. I'm gonna have a little sip here. <gasps> oh. mm. Wait, so why, why is the balsamic um, helpful? I don't, I, I never would have thought of that. <laughs> well, it, it kind of, mind. it does a nice, it, there's a little pairing thing happening. So yeah. the sweetness of the orange and the syrup we made yeah. goes nicely against the, the like kind of acidity, the brightness and the sourness of the balsamic. And it's like a rich kind of deep flavor that brings out from the orange. So good. And that's why we have the basil too, a little herbaceous. You got a little bit of everything in this. This <laughs> is a little dance on the palate. Love it, love it. Well, folks, thank you again for joining us at Innovators Kitchen. We'll be back again with another episode.